Okay, here's homework 16. Basically what a nuclear reactor is, it's a very complex H2O boiler. That's pretty much it. Um, humans have decided that the easiest way for us to generate electricity is to turn a turbine if that turbine is attached to a generator. And the generator is basically just a bunch of wires wrapped around an axle with a magnetic field around it. And as long as those wires are moving through the magnetic field, you get electricity. So if I can boil water, I can make steam, and the steam can turn the turbine. So that's what this process is right here. Here's my turbine right here, and if I can get this turbine, if I can get this turbine to turn, then I can get and I can get this generator to turn. And if this generator turns, then I get electricity. That's it. So all we're looking for is to make this stuff here work. And all the rest of this stuff is like the pain in the butt to get it to actually do its job. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single one of these parts because you can look on the notes. Um, but we'll go through the major ones. So the major ones are going to be, this is where the fuel is. This fuel is stored. Here's the fuel, this black portion. And around the outside of that, you can see that light color. That's a container that's holding the fuel in there. So everything that's fuel and uh, fission products, everything that's radioactive is inside of these boxes or rods, depending on what it is that they are. And so nothing else is radioactive if everything is running correctly. These things here are the control rods. What they do is they absorb neutrons. So since the reaction has to have a neutron running into a uranium atom, if I put these rods in between, then all the neutrons get absorbed. So a neutron from say this guy, this uh, fuel assembly here, will hop over to this fuel assembly and hit another neutron. But if there's a control rod in the way, then it stops. Continue with the chain reaction. Okay, um, this here is the pressurizer, and what that does is it makes sure that this water is at 2000 PSI. The reason I need it as a high pressure is because the water temperature is 500 plus degrees, and I can't let the water boil because steam is terrible at transferring heat. So when the water comes through here, the primary coolant, it comes up between those and the water itself cools the uh, fuel assembly off and thereby itself getting heated. So when it gets heated, it transfers its energy into this pipe and then goes through. So I have hot water here and then I've got cold water when it comes through the steam generator portion here. Um, so this is a pipe filled with water and a pipe filled with water. So this here is called the primary loop. All of this stuff here stays contained. None of the water in here touches anything else. In the four years I was on our aircraft carrier, we put a couple of liters in, in four years. Never took anything out. So how do I get steam over here, which is what our goal is? So when the water comes in here, it hits a pipe. So if you've got regular old liquid water and it hits a pipe that's 500, 525 degrees, it's going to immediately flash to steam, which is what this is. So this thing here is a steam generator. So a hot pipe running through the middle of a container, water hits the pipe, steam. That steam is used to turn the turbine. And what comes out of the turbine is steam that's been used up. So think about like bathroom steam or something like that. You can't turn a turbine with the steam that comes out of your shower. Well, what I need is for that steam to turn back into a liquid. So this pipe right here is filled with cold water. So when the cold water, so when the uh, spent steam hits the cold pipe, it turns back into a liquid. And then I can get this process going again. So this is my secondary loop. This, remember, is my primary loop. So primary secondary and then this loop since this thing here condenses the steam back to uh, water what I have here is a condenser and so that makes this loop the condensing loop so the condensing loop sends its water through this cooling water tower so this is the thing this thing here is the big nuclear thing you see at the beginning of the Simpsons or if you see a nuclear power plant it's that tall thing there okay so it's just got a pipe with water running through it and the way it gets cold is there'll be a lake or a river and somewhere they're going to just dump water on top of these pipes. And when this cold water hits these warm pipes, you get a little water vapor. So this water vapor right here is literally this river water right here. This is the same stuff. So this water vapor that you see has only come from the river. It's not inside the condensing loop. It's not inside the secondary loop. And it's certainly not coming from the primary coolant. So why would it be difficult for, for uh, radiation to leak into the river? 
you'd have to break the fuel assembly. Break the fuel assembly. You'd have to break the steam generator. You'd have to break the condenser. You'd have to break the cooling tower. And you'd have to make sure that all of these pumps keep pumping. Well, if any one of these things breaks, all of these pumps turn off. So uh, you don't have to worry about that happening. Um, what comes out of the top of the cooling water tower? It's easy. It's uh, H2O vapor. Not steam, because steam's a gas and you can't see gases. It's just tiny droplets of water. It's basically a man-made cloud. Scram. Safety. Control. Rod. Axe. Man. Um, when they first made a nuclear power, they had a guy with an axe standing next to a rope. And if anything bad was to happen, he was supposed to cut the uh, cable that went to the control rod. And that was supposed to fall in and turn the reaction off. So they still use this acronym when they talk about turning the reactor off in an emergency. That's it.